turn that on. Turn that on so they should be able to hear you. And here we are. Episode one of the Factory Bros. Video stream All capture. Right. Turn Very that cool. on. Oh. It's it's lost your uh, it's lost your video again. Oh no. The video's terrible. Well, we're just gonna have to live with it. Actually maybe we can. Crop it in here. Okay. <laughs> okay, Google. Whatever. So, uh, this is the first factory that I built. This is the first... The, my first playthrough is totally vanilla. And, uh... Let's see, where do you want to start? You're off down in the nuclear zone? Oh, I'm just wandering around. Just looking at stuff. Okay. Oh, oh. Does, does the spider get hit by trains? I don't think it does. I don't think it gets hit by trains. Yeah, I step I think over trains? I think uh, it doesn't get collide with anything. It's just like the legs. Um, it The legs might collide with trains, but I don't know. So the um, the rocket is where basically where I spawned. Like, or you probably spawned in there too. You spawn in. Or you spawn in. I'm spawning what where do you spawn where did you spawn in I didn't notice oh uh, I don't know like a little south of where you were yeah yeah right around the around where the rocket was probably yeah well yeah I mean I guess uh, you can start near uh, are you narrating for the audience is that what we're doing here yeah I think so I, I don't know I don't, all right so, well, so nobody's gonna watch this for the audience <laughs> I'm running around like a madman. <laughs> Nobody is ever going to watch this, but, uh, you know, for the purpose of of doing a tour. I figured as long as I was going to do a tour, uh, I may as well, Can like, you know, do it for well, everybody. The spider does not like water. Right. Oh, no, it, um, it won't walk on water. It's not a, a Jesus Christ spider bot. Well, it seems like it, you know, shallow water. It's yeah, water's kind of weird in this game. I think it's... So a lot of the the motifs in this game I've noticed seem to draw from uh, Nazca and the Valley of the Winds, where it's like, have you have you seen Nazca and the Valley of the Winds? No. Um, it's anime. It's based on a manga. The there's uh, a bunch of bugs and they swarm very much like the bugs in Factorio, and uh, nothing can go in the water, just like in Factorio, because it's all like acid or something. In, in the in the manga anyway um and then there's like pollution like the whole world is polluted but the bugs like eat up the pollution and like purify the land or something kind of like in factorio so it's just it's interesting that there's like it seems to be this it seems to be drawing on the same uh same ideas but anyway that's the justification i give to myself for why nothing goes in the water i see uh, so yeah, you were asking about the nuclear plant. Where you can get yachts. Yeah. I'm sure there's a yacht mod. I was thinking actually, like, that could be really interesting. Having ships, AI ships that mm -hmm. go to ports. Like, uh, yeah, and you go to travel yeah, around and carry stuff. Yeah. I don't know. That wouldn't dramatically change the game. Though. Yeah, probably not. I mean, unless you did like an ocean world or something, change the the map jam. That's true. Uh, you were asking about the nuclear map? plant. You've just killed everything. Oh yeah, look at the map and just you gotta zoom way yeah, out. Yeah, so you basically have murdered everything, so that they're they don't really expand aggressively because they're not in your pollution zone. Yes, they still expand the same as before, uh, but they don't attack the base because yeah, because they're not absorbing any pollution. Uh, although I right, learned that the base, and so you're just killing their colonizers, basically. Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, I learned that when you destroy an enemy base, it has a really high evolution effect on them. So my evolution mm -hmm. factor is like 0.95. It's almost maxed out. I see. But uh, but that's okay. Uh, and yeah, I've got the I've got the the trains with the artillery wagon set up, and they're on like a rotational cycle. I don't have like eight or whatever seven or eight trains i've got only four or maybe five 
Um, but then they're set up like once they get to half ammo, then they go to the other side of the map and like work there for a bit. So. I see. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. So basically, I I started the game, uh, did the normal progression, switched over to solar pretty quickly. Um, I haven't. This is the first base I made in Factorio, but it's not the first factory game that I have played. So I had kind of mm -hmm. a, a sense for uh, row production, allowing for expansion, um, kind of putting a bunch of buffer between the different production lines so that you could route stuff more easily. So I didn't have to do too much rework on my base as I got to the end game. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. It wasn't like a speed run or anything. I think it was like 60 hours or whatever. But, um, yeah, it wasn't, yeah, cool. wasn't too bad. Uh, anything Let's interesting? Here. My, oh, you've almost completed the tree here. The uh, research tree? Yeah, you just got... Yeah, I've researched everything. Fine. Yeah, this, these are the infinite, the infinite techs that I'm working on right now. So I've I've researched everything. You're asking about the nuclear plant. This is something I was pretty happy about. I've got um, nine reactors all next to each other, as you saw, and they they are manually fueled. But because there are nine of them, you get a lot of efficiency. The center plant gets like a five-fold uh, multiplier on its thermal production. And so if you had like an infinite grid, you could get close to a total of five x. But as it is, it's like 3.8x, which is plenty. I mean, you don't you don't need a huge amount. And then uh, it's just intermittently fueled. Whenever you run out of steam, it stores all the steam up in these these tanks. And each of these tanks stores something like five gigajoules or something crazy. Like it's a huge amount of energy. And uh, so then it just uses it when it needs it, which at this point is never. But uh, if I increase production or something, it'll start using it at nighttime probably. Yeah, it's very convenient that the uh, fluid steam fluid doesn't. Like bleed heat. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to insulate them or anything. <laughs> and the, and the same tanks. Hot gas. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but that's cool. It's a great idea for a battery. It's way more efficient than these giant uh, battery grids. Yeah, accumulator grids. Now, I'm wondering if you. I, do you have an electric boiler? That's yeah. something I think I was in the Crastorio too. Uh, oh, no, no, I don't. Can, yeah, all you I've can got is these turn electric boilers. energy back into steam, so that would just be like a more efficient. Yeah. Way to yeah, I think I feel like there should be more options because right now there's just the combustion boiler for producing low temperature steam and just the heat exchanger with the nuclear reactor for producing high temperature steam. There aren't any other any other options. But uh, yeah, like I said, it's vanilla, so there are lots of mods out there for changing stuff. This is my rocket line, and I'm just burning off the, the excess um, natural gas in acid for the, the uranium production. And the uranium is also manually fueled, like these separators or whatever. I just manually put, oh, um, I manually extract the uranium from them. So they just accumulate uranium until there's, you know, they get full and then they stop. But at this point, I don't really need any more uranium, so I'm just letting them let them fill up. Nice. Yeah. I like the very spread out. I think you were telling me you had a strategy of just clearing all of the nests when they were still really small at the beginning of the game. And then you just kind of got a lot of space. And so then you're free to space out your production centers here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, well, so you can see the original, um, the original wall here. This is kind of where I walled <laughs> off to start with. I kind of explored a bit and found these natural um, natural cliffs and tried to kind of connect them together. And I was fortunate to have the lake to the south. Uh, kind of a big lake there. So that formed a, a part of my defensive barrier. Um, but pretty quickly I expanded beyond that to where the enemy, the, the enemy bugs, I think they attacked me once or twice from pollution. But I pretty quickly expanded and just wiped them all out around the base so that they weren't a threat at all. And then um, started walking these perimeter walls out. So I don't know if there's... I tore most of them down already, but uh, maybe like twice the size of my base to start with. And then 
just you know kept exploring and walking him out. I, I've really captured way more land than I need at this point, but it's fun. It's a fun part of the game for me. Is you know, like walling yeah. stuff off and getting it so it's safe. I like the perimeter design you have there of just these little laser bastions. Yeah, the picket and defense. And not even worrying about completing the wall because you're just really trying to kill colonies. Yeah. Colonies. Yeah. It, they're a lot easier to place, too, because you can just um, place them at approximately the tower spacing and not worry about, yeah, about making it contiguous. And the laser fields overlap so that they... They form a continuous defensive barrier, if not a continuous wall. Cool. Yeah. It worked pretty well. Let's see if there's anything else interesting. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just normal Factorio stuff. Um, production, solar panels, train stuff. I, after I had basically finished all this, I watched a, a speed run, and he didn't use trains at all. So I was wondering if that was what. Uh, what it doesn't really seem was. like trains are super efficient. Um, you can use just belt lines. The only thing is, you you like if you have a problem in your production line, uh, there's like just kind of a big lag before it gets running again because all the belts get backed up or whatever right yeah um and then trains are kind of a nice way to abstract i think that's the major thing it's like a way to abstract different templates yeah so yeah. that you have a standardized input output yeah it certainly um, makes it easier to expand production later on because you just add a station at the mine and you're yeah. done and then also if you you know if you're playing for mega base and you, you use up all your nearby resources then it's certainly easier to go build a rail line up. Right, so, right. So, bring it in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's kind of... Well, I'm, I got a little demoralized on my, my <laughs> base. Uh, there's just like a number of sort of major projects that I'd have to do to kind of get things where I want them to be and one of the problems is that I've really mined out all of the resources near me and I have to mm -hmm. really expand aggressively through some dense colonies and then wall it off and then build build a whole rail system out there. Yeah. Um all pretty doable but it kinda just seems like a, a grind, I guess. Yeah. Well did you want to go uh blow up some nests out on the perimeter or uh Oh sure. Uh, do I have ammo? Hop here? over into the orange, the orange spider bot there. And that's oh, full. Have of, ammo. All right. That's full cool. of rockets. Uh, let's see. Where should we go? Hmm. I have kind of cleared everything out. Uh, it looks like there's a nest up here. Let's see. Uh, orange bot. Go. Oh, I can't tell where to go. All right, well, this way. Oh, up there. Yeah. Upper left. I see it. Yeah, it looked like one you had gotten attacked up there. Oh, yeah, maybe so. So I got all the way up to rocket launch on my first base. I don't even think I have a save. But, oh, no. Um, then decided to... Well, I was just done with this. I didn't say All right, over there. But, mm. um... Decided to try to do Crastorio plus space exploration. Yeah. Um, and that definitely makes it a lot more complicated. Mm. It's definitely this big bottleneck around. It's like it's one thing to launch one rocket, but now you've just got to launch them continuously. That's yeah. just a like, step in your uh, logistics line. And so mm. um, it's definitely kind of, you kind of need a mega base to even play the game. Hmm. But um, yeah, it was kind of cool. That's definitely a big challenge, and definitely a couple hundred hours of content, I'd imagine. Right. Yeah, Crestorio seemed interesting. There were a number of mods I was looking at. Although the one mod that I really wanted uh, was a mod that lets you like tame. 
but like tame and and ranch the aliens maybe or like do something with yeah because right now you just kill them and that's the end of it right it's like there's no there's no mechanics around alien alien stuff oh, okay you cleared that yeah so this normally i ride in that one and um and i've got a bunch of lasers on me and so that's got a bunch of shields so i just like waltz in and uh and laser stuff but it works pretty well to have two guys you know one on long range with lasers or with missiles and uh short range with lasers oh. um, um. I know in the in the mods I'm using, you can like produce them as a sort of weapon. Hmm. Um, basically, like it's an item, you can release them and they fight for you. Oh, okay, um, interesting. <laughs> it keeps auto saving and it's like lagging out. I'm playing on my laptop, so. This is oh, not the good. ideal, uh, not the ideal context. Oh, well. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. Is it big enough to nuke? Maybe it is. There it goes. Oh, nice. Getting the lag on your end, but yeah, I'm getting on mine. Hey, there we go. Yeah, one base cleared. Yeah. So anyway, that's my cool. first base. Um, yeah. Did you want to try to tour yours, or do you want to call it a day? For now? Yeah, we can go through it. We can try it. Uh, you're gonna have to load a lot of mods. Okay. Uh, I think you already have them, though, so we can try jumping over. Sure. All right. Let's see. Quick game. Oh wait, did I just leave the bot there? Oh, you can re control. Yeah, yeah, it, I've though, got right? it remote. Uh, let me. All right. Uh, I will host a my game, and we'll see. I, there's a few things I I can't say. Really, is anything I did unique? No. I've I found it and used a few cool. Um, things. Assuming we can get in, my base is Crastorio 2 Space Exploration. That's the core of it. I have a few other ones, but um, yeah, let's see. Now is Crastorio 2 and Space Exploration are two separate like mod packs, right? Correct, but they they go together. Mm. They work together. So, okay, I'm in, so you can try to join. Um, so I guess a few themes of this base are, I used a rail template that kind of divides the map into a grid that is two, logi two Roboport logistic fields wide by two tall. Mm. So, so it takes four ports to cover the whole space. And okay. then that's one grid. Um, and that becomes kind of like a factory center, um, which, which you can easily connect to rails on whatever side. Um, so that kind of helps simplify thinking about adding factory or 
factory centers or production centers. Yeah. Um, doesn't necessarily make it actually um, because then you just have all these trains you have to manage. But hmm. nevertheless, uh, that's the direction I took it. It kind of looks cool. Um, and then there's another thing uh, with space exploration to kind of solve because they, you need a mega base. Um, to kind of solve some of this, they let you have core mining drills, which are infinite, basically infinite resource nodes. Mm. But the trick is that they produce a little bit of everything, okay. um, at least on generic planets they do, um, which becomes a problem of like, you can't use everything equally. So <laughs> if one product line gets stopped up, all the product lines get stopped up. Right. So it becomes a problem of disposing of excess. Um, Makes sense. So um, there's that, and then um, I did use like an interesting um, kind of infinite power generation technique I saw from someone um, using biomenthol. So basically turning wood into infinite power. Mm. Um, so it's greenhouses that feed. Um, I think this must be a Crastorio thing, though. Yeah, so I'm not sure houses are, so, are no. crust or they're not in vanilla anyway. Um, but yeah, so greenhouses which feed um, both boilers and um, uh, chemical fuel refineries. Mm. So anyway, that's one thing I did. And then um, what else have I done here? Um, I kind of like overproduced chips so i have this massive chip plant that can ah. just crank out a million chips like the processor um, and chips are the replacement units. for science yeah it's like this it's like the different science colors so there's oh, like blue, okay. Green okay chips but um i kind of overdid it so that it's actually a problem like it, it re leads to this like bouncing okay, let's hmm. say i launch 40,000 chips into orbit, right? To power my space science. Mm. Well, then suddenly, like, my chip production goes into, like, full tilt, cranking out chips to restock oh, yeah. the stockpile. And it just devours all of the resources. So <laughs> it's right. kind of overdone. Um, it's, right. like, one of those problems where, like, oh, I can't have too many. It's like, no, you can. <laughs> too many is a problem. So, um, yeah. So that's that. Uh, the, the Crastorio 2 tech or resource routing is very different than vanilla. Um, hmm. There's a much larger demand for wood. They give you the um, greenhouse, greenhouse as a way to get infinite wood. Need, huh? Okay. Yeah. Um, but there's kind of, it's definitely. Uh, different uh, i'm not sure if it's, i say it's slightly more complicated but not dramatically all right um what else have i done on my base i started this concept of like a super defense line because i kind of like that um but i haven't finished it but we can kind of see oh. it. okay yeah i'm almost in um all right also i've got um air filters i don't know if that's vanilla i don't think it is it's not but air filters are like an anti um pollution device mm. and then you can like recycle used air filters so i have a few of these set up um to kind of help minimize the pollution output um one of the things about core mines is they produce a huge amount of pollution so you end up with uh -huh. this giant balloon um, there are two new hazards um, in the game. Uh, one is meteors, which basically rocks fall, break your stuff. Oh, um, not like it's space exploration, but like in on the ground. Yeah, it's in, in it's part of the space exploration mod, but basically mm. it's a hazard that's you know can be anywhere. It's meteors. Yeah. So um. So you have to build meteor defense guns. They are very power intensive um, when charging. So it kind of creates this power uh, management 
challenge. Mm. And then, um, what else? Oh, yeah, and then there's also uh, solar flares, which are super devastating. Um, basically, they're like, creates giant energy beams from the sky that just ruin your, your day. <laughs> um, and the way to defend against it is this device called the umbrella. And it just like consumes, I think 200 gigajoules, 200 gigajoules. gigajoules. That's a lot. Yeah, it's 200 gigajoules of power. So you to successfully defend against the solar flare. You need 200 gigajoules of power storage or some equivalent in power production Ugh. yeah like excess power production so right uh i haven't really done that yet i've just tried to fix things when they break mm. uh, part of that is that i don't have uranium on the map so i don't have uh, oh, okay um, have nuclear, nuclear power. power yet if i did i would use your trick and store it all so are you in yet oh you're catching up still. it says it's catching up now also um you know there's a lot of nifty tricks you can do with uh the robo logistics ports and um but you, a requester box is necessary for most of those cool tricks you can do uh mm. requester boxes have been gated behind space technology so i don't have them yet oh, so i okay. have to kind of make do with um, like demand pull circuits and stuff. And then that's probably the coolest thing that I implemented was I saw on Reddit someone did this demand pull uh, production line that uses warehouses as a bus um, and, and circuit logic to do demand pull. Uh, his blueprints didn't work out of the box. Um, I don't really know why they're broken. So I had to sort of like re redo the wiring, but I implemented his idea. I mean, the idea isn't unique in any way. Mm. Um, uh, but that, yeah, I have a demand pull um, production line, which is kind of cool because you don't have to, like, really think through the belt logic anymore. Mm. Um, right. There's some downsides to it, though. Right. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Unfortunately, it looks like this is not going to happen today. Or maybe we'll have to pick yeah. this up later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, episode two. Episode wow. two of the Factory Bros. <laughs> Amazing content that we have here. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I guess that could be a teaser for our second episode. Um, the band pole, warehouse, bus, factory lines. There you go. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool when it works. I got it working. You, um, it also minimizes the amount of sort of excess production that gets caught up on belts because you no longer have belts uh, as a part of your um, production line. Oh, so you don't right. end up with like all this buffer, buffer yeah. waste. Yeah. Um, also, it allows you to have like a very general purpose input output. Um, interface on the rail line where you just use filter feeder filter feeders to um or inserters filter inserters to do input output mm. um so train basically just pulls up with everything in one train <laughs> and then the the inserters pull what they want yeah yeah. Um, so does you that... do have to then make sure your train doesn't overfill on. Right. One yeah. Minute. Yeah. Although you can set the trains up to like, I don't know in Crastorio maybe there's more options, but at least in Vanilla there's options for like, when the train has this many of this thing, then leave the station or whatever. Right. Yeah. Basically, you just skip stations if you're already above the threshold. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so yeah, if you presuming you have that logic up, then you can just have like a. A uh, general purpose input output, which is cool. Right. Um, again, it simplifies your whole factory planning a lot. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll have to do that in another episode. But um, on, that's also very useful for space because in the space exploration, uh, I think it was developed to solve the space problem. Uh, mm. When I saw the guy's mod, it was or uh, his thing on Reddit is about space ex exploration. So. Um, 
the problem with space exploration is you got these rockets coming in and they just dump everything in one spot. Right. So then it becomes really hard to even build the pipe filter logic to, to like sort everything. So in this scheme, you don't really have sort. The sorting happens as you pull it. So you just have one dump, general purpose resource dump, and then mm. the warehouses start drawing out as they need it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, there's a, there's a downside in that the filter inserters can only hold four filters at once, and mm. so if you don't have the supply to meet the demand of whatever they happen to like be trying to pull, they'll just get locked up. Now I right. think you can create a logic to cycle that mm. so they don't get locked up. Mm. I have to think about that carefully now. Yeah, sounds complicated. Right. Well, All right. Uh, that's Sweet. enough. I guess. Talk Thanks for coming on. Enough. <laughs> enough talking at the blank screen here, but right. we'll have to show it some. Cool. Cool. All right. All I'll right. talk to you soon. Bye. All right. Take care.